All right. Well, as is our want on a Friday, we end the week, and it's been quite a week, I've got to say, by having what I'm calling the Free Speech Friday. And we get a couple of people in from a, a roster of many free-thinking and interesting New Zealanders. They don't have to be people that I agree with or you agree with or who even agree with each other. But we get them on, we pick over the events of the week and we just have a good uh, round the houses on a Friday morning. And um, this week I have two local body candidates. One of them is a deputy mayor. The other one wants to be mayor of Auckland. There was quite some response to your in my interview with him um, here on, on the platform. But we'll go uh, women rather than ladies. Women first. Uh, our first guest is the Deputy Mayor of Taupo. I think she's standing for the mayoralty of Taupo, former Head of Social Welfare, and someone who's, gosh, way back in the midst of time, wasn't, uh, wasn't too bad at making the odd headline herself. She of the dangly earrings, uh, Christine Rankin. Christine, lovely <laughs> to have you with us. Thank you, and it's lovely to be here. Oh, great. Great. Really now, Christine, you are running for the, for the mayoralty of Taupo, right? How's that going? Hell yes, I am. Oh, look, I've run a really big, comprehensive campaign this time, and coming to a small town, very different than, you know, if I ran for anything in Auckland, I topped the poll by thousands. You come into a small town and you're an outsider and you've got to do your apprenticeship, and I think I've done it, because the reaction this time is dramatically different. Yeah. It's quite exciting. Mm, good, very good, exciting. Good stuff. Well, also, hoping to be mayor, but in the big smoke in Auckland, and uh, quite a response to his discussion with me the other day. Craig Lord, Auckland mayoral candidate. Uh, Craig, did you get the platform, the Plunkett bump after that interview? Um, yes, I did, and, and thanks for inviting me back on because it's good for your listener um, views to have me back on here. I think I, uh, I'm, I'm so happy I was able to boost it for you and give you that platform bump. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what about, my, what about my? Hang on. What about my dangly earrings? You didn't ask me about that. <laughs> Craig, what you do in the privacy of your own home is your business. Hey, Craig. I, look, I did get a message this morning, and I haven't had time because I was actually away in Masterton um, facilitating a mayoral forum or a mayoral debate in Masterton at the Farrier's Arms. Um, was there a debate last night that Wayne Brown did was a no show on? Yes. Well, it was more Efeso Collins. So Efeso's bailed on quite a few of them, uh, some of them with an apology, but a handful without. Uh, so he bailed yesterday afternoon's one. It was a pretty decent one in the CBD that was going to be happening. And who, so was, running, who was running that? Uh, sorry, who was what? Who was running the debate yesterday afternoon? Was uh, it, it was Commercial Club. Okay. So Preston. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so Preston. They had Wendy Petrie was going to be the MC, so it wasn't anything tiny. This was fairly well organised and organised a long time ago. So Collins pulled out because he'd rather go, I saw on his Twitter feed, he'd rather go um, eat pies in, a, in some shop somewhere, yeah. um, talking to the locals. And so when Wayne Brown heard about the Fesso not going, uh, his arrogance came out and said, well, there's no point me going at all. So he pulled out as well. So they. Had so what, you had lunch with Wendy? Yeah, well, I, I asked, but they didn't want to do it without the other two there. That's unfair, Craig. I reckon if you've committed, you should get just all the time. It should have just been the Craig Lord show. Well, it should have been, but actually, in all seriousness, I think it's quite insulting to both the voters and the people who organised that event and the people who had made time to go to it. I, I think it's pretty disgraceful on both of their parties. All right, Craig, um, have you got any indication that the poll numbers are changing, that you're not a distant threat? Oh, the polls are a joke, mate. I mean, let's, let's be fair. It's a handful of people they ring up on a phone um, and what makes it a little bit dubious for me is the pollsters already publicly endorsed one of the candidates before the poll came out. So that's a little bit of an off-putting event. Um, but really, I'm happy with what I'm getting out in the reach and on the street. Um, and I'm, I'm sensing, I mean, I got the platform bump. What more do you need? Yeah, that's right. Gosh, I could be responsible for all sorts of things. All right, let's get into our topics, guys. Now, I just want to ask Craig, have you ever met Christine? Christine, you ever met Craig? Nice no, to meet you. Not to my knowledge. All Lovely right. to meet you, Craig. Well, well, okay. So you were introduced now. Let's start with, uh, I guess, and so much has happened this week. A uh, Sam Uffendall back in Parliament, cleared by the M M Maria Dews report that we don't get to see, um, and the National Party and Chris Luxon, you may have just heard saying, time to move on. Christine, is that a? Do you think that's the right outcome here? 
Well, look, I don't think they've got any other choice. I mean, it's the party's fault, not Sam's fault, in actual fact. He declared what he had done, and it seems that the inquiry has proven that one thing was correct and one thing wasn't. It is time to move on. But, you know, I think he is branded now for a long time. Politics is dirty and horrible. It's a snake pit, in my experience. And they're just never going to stop going after him. I, I, I don't see his future as being rosy in terms of Parliament. They'll never leave him alone. Uh, Craig, what do you reckon? Um, fair dibs for Sam Uffendall. We should let him try and have a political career now and put this behind him. Yeah, let the voters decide next year. I'm a little bit torn on the report situation. Uh, it, it's good that it was done independently. Um, I'd like to see what's in it, but then if you see what's in it, it becomes an issue for future reports when people don't want to come forward and talk. So you've got to be careful about what you do and don't release. So that's why it, it, I'm a little bit split on whether it should be out or not. But it's uh, just let the voters choose. They, that's their decision next year. All right. Uh, Christine, now you're someone... Uh, you're someone, and, and it's one of the things I admire about you, to be honest. You've been at the centre of scandal and controversy. God, I can remember having a roster, I, I think, at TV3 of just ringing you and harassing you on the phone. Um, you know, when you're at the centre of all that State Services Commission Mallard stuff. Um, you can get through scandal, can, can't you, and outrage, if you just stick to your knitting and get oh. on with it. Well, the reality is mine was most unusual. It was about a government hating um, the reforms I'd brought about in a, in a public service organisation. And they were quite phenomenal. They were admired across the world. People came to see them from all over the world. I went all over the world to talk about them, but Helen Clark decided they were evil and I must not continue and I didn't look right. So I fought that really hard every single day for two years and it was pretty hideous. You know, I had bullets with my name carved on them. I was spat on. I couldn't walk out on the street. The, the media slept outside my house and it never stopped. So yes, you, I, I think a lot of people would have taken their lives. It was extreme and I was harassed every day by politicians and public servants and it was cruel and nasty and vile and you know there are still people in New Zealand 23 years later who refer to short skirts and big earrings yep yeah and they still believe the rubbish even though I went to court and proved that most of it wasn't true they still harass me about chartering those planes yeah. which I well, never did. I, I wonder then so, Christine you know, how yeah. you feel when you see someone like Grant Robertson saying it's awfully <laughs> nasty out there it's awfully worrying <laughs> about their days, days, and we need more protection from the DPS and the Lamingtons and everything. You must laugh your ass off. Oh, look, it's just disgusting. What they did was, um, I think, it, like, there's nothing to compare it with. Someone's going to look at this one day and say, how the hell did that happen in our country? Because it was extreme, and they, the Labor government of the time, were incredibly nasty and bullying. There's never been anything like it. And I do think it's a joke. I've seen male politicians cry after three days under pressure. Oh, my goodness me. Mm. Craig, are you sure you want to stand for local body politics? Yeah, I love bullies. They're like a radar. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better. There is nothing better in the world than taking down bullies. All right, and how do we do that, Craig? How do we take down the bullies? Do we run around like Grant Roberts saying, oh, I'm being bullied? No, you just, you just play their game and you make sure that they are the ones who look idiotic. It's, it's not that difficult. I mean, you don't have to go smash them or, or, or go around running around like a sook. You, you just you, you play the game and you, you tactically use your words and you drop them down. Mm. All right, so at least you know what you're, you're possibly in for, Craig. Um, Maybe I can, gosh, I can see a mayoral forum, forum between Taupo and Auckland occurring, uh, you know. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Um, all right, so we say Grant Robertson is gilding the lily on saying, oh, it's just so hard being a politician these days. And I have to say, Christine, I always laugh when I see it from the Labour Party, who are the most vicious institutional bullies, um, Absolutely. I think, in New Absolutely. Zealand politics. There is no doubt uh, about it. Um, look. I, I guess, and I don't know if we necessarily had this on the list. Oh, no, no, we did. The Mahuta investigation. Um, oh, dear. And, well, <laughs> well, isn't it interesting that, that Sam Muffindor apparently was mean to his flatmate 
and he gets suspended while a QC's inquiry, a private inquiry essentially by the National Party into his behaviours is conducted, which basically found really that the ex-flatmate story didn't quite stack up. Even if it had, I'd say it's not a crime. Um, but we now have the husband of a serving cabinet minister being investigated for his contractual relationships with government departments that she, some of which she has been directly involved in and suggestions of conflict of interest or irregularity, but she's still in her job. Is this, guys, the sort of situation where we would, if we were to apply the rules that were applied to Sam Uffendall, when the minister, well, where the minister should stand aside until these matters are resolved? Craig. Uh, not necessarily stand aside the minister. Uh, however, what I see in this red flag, and the whole thing is a red flag, is the uh, racism, the fear of racism going on here. If this was a, a, a white uh, yeah, minister and it was uh, issues there with one simple issue, there would have been an immediate investigation. I think they were scared to touch this because it was a Māori female minister and it's a fair factor here and they've been uh, walking a very careful path through a minefield. They should have got onto this a lot earlier because it's getting bigger and bigger and there's too many red flags to not have done well, it. Well, so. believe me, here at the platform we pushed the story hard. It took us uh, weeks and weeks before mm. mainstream media would pick it up. I have to say the Herald's done a good job um, though it is still getting bugger all coverage uh, in other mainstream uh, media outlets. Christine, surely the right thing to do here where it's conflict of interest is that the minister goes on a bit of garden leave? Oh, I absolutely agree. I think it should be treated like any other serious issue that's happened down there. And, I mean, the whole thing is just unbelievable. Why didn't her departments protect her by opening up the, the bidding situation? Why didn't they make it a commercial situation? What they've done is given her husband preference without testing what he has to offer against anybody else. And then the work that's produced, nobody knows what the hell has been written in eight pages. It doesn't make any sense. And it costs a fortune. There is something really, really wrong here. And I don't know how she can front up uh, every day and say, I had nothing to do with well, it. Well, more we than that, if you believe the left-wing trolls, she was the person screeching for an inquiry. That's oh, the yeah, news. That. Well, she must, Come on. She, yeah. must be, she must be very confident of the outcome. And I'll tell you what, they are so manipulative that I worry about the outcome too. I, I watched when I was down there the pressure put on the head of the public service, for example, to find the result that they want. wanted. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I don't trust this process at all. And I see Peter Hughes, who I have a lot of respect for, but he came out yesterday saying it didn't qualify as some particular kind of... Yeah, well, of he's prejudged, hasn't he? Well, yeah, already it's being... And look, he'll be under instruction. Don't think that it's um, independent and everybody plays the game. They play a game, but it's not a very nice one, and a particularly yeah, when you've got a Labour government. Yeah, they're, 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 scared of, they're scared of the result on this one because, again, it'll go oh, down the racism path. Scared. You know it's going to happen. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Look, the other thing... Oh, look, look, let's have a wee break. You catch your breath. We'll play a promo and we'll come back and we'll... Uh, two more topics to get through. It's Free Speech Friday, so our panellists today, Craig Lord, Auckland mayoral candidate, Christine Rankin, currently the Deputy Mayor of Taupo and campaigning to be the Mayor of Taupo in the central uh, North Island, a very nice town it is too. Uh, guys, the Prime Minister, of course, went to the Royal Funeral, uh, farewells Queen Elizabeth II, then hatches a lift with Trudeau on a plane uh, to the United Nations, and I've actually got no issues with that. Presumably it saved money from the taxpayer. He didn't charge her or anything, so I'm all good for a hitching a lift with uh, old blackface. Um, but she goes to the UN, and it's all about the Christchurch call. Um, we had David Seymour on this morning saying, what is this weird obsession with the Christchurch call? And what even is the Christchurch call to most uh, New Zealanders? Craig, do you agree with critics who would say... This seems more about building brand Adern than brand New Zealand. Yeah, this is a this is a token gesture of the highest order. It's not achieving anything. At the end of the day, the guy. What, I mean, you could label him a domestic terrorist at best, but 
in reality, the guy was an absolute nut job who managed to get himself his hands on weapons that he should not have been able to get his hands on. That should be the inquest. That should be the whole um, uh, angle of attack. How do we stop that ever happening again? But that's been swept under the carpet. So going overseas to the UN and, and shouting, we want to have a better technology to try and find the evil in the world online is not going to achieve anything. There's already plenty of gurus who can do all that sort of stuff, and they did pretty much instantly when it was happening. Uh, this whole thing doesn't make sense. One and one is not adding up to two here. So, yeah, I do. there's, there's certainly a look-at-me aspect to it. Christine, what do you say? Um, do you get the Christchurch call? Do you even think of what happened as a terror attack rather than a mass murder? Well, I, I don't think of it as a terrorist attack, and I think the, the response to something absolutely disgusting, it was a one-off, the whole response from the government has been ridiculous. But look, Jacinda is really smart at promoting herself on the world stage. She's doing really badly at home, but man, she's doing fantastically over there. They love her, and this kind of stuff feeds right into it. I don't know what she intends to do in the future, but she knows she's not going to win the next election, I'm sure, and this is all just prep. She'll be able to do anything or be anything she wants. I guess a question we might want to be asking the Prime Minister guys in future is, if you're going to campaign as leader of the Labour Party at the next election, do you promise to stay on if you lose, or are you only here for the good times? Do you think that's a fair enough question, Craig? Yeah, it is. I, I, I've been thinking for quite a while that she's been lining up a job, big job with, for the UN and, and, and selling herself brilliantly to do it. I mean, her expertise is PR. That's, that's really, apart from fish and chips, that's her expertise. So she's, she's doing a sensational job of that, her, and the people around her, she's made sure she's got the right ones. Um, yeah, you should stay on. If you're going to uh, champion yourself to be the PM, then stay on. Uh, Christine, what do you say? Is that a legitimate question to ask the Prime Minister? Yeah, I, th I think it is legitimate to ask, but there's been quite a history of people leaving when they lose, and I think it's something to do with how the party feels afterwards and rebuilding it, to be fair. I mean, we lost Bill English when we should never have lost him. He was loved and admired and respected at that time, and he disappeared on us, which changed a lot of things. Um, I don't know if you can commit them to staying on. You know that she won't, and I don't know if she could be honest about that. She's going somewhere else because she's certainly not staying here. Mm, uh, Helen Clark lost an election and stuck around, and I always kind of admire someone. I think we, we learn far more from our defeat than we oh, do I'm from sorry. our victory. See, Craig, this is great. You are, like, going to have a university degree in this by the end of the local body elections. Well, well, I got third last time, so that was my defeat, yeah, and I've learnt from it. Is there a third place prize in, in mayoralty races, Craig? No, there's not. Yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. Uh, just, just saying, Craig. Just saying. Yeah, I know. Um, I know. More important stuff, uh, and a serious question in some ways, are you both All Black fans still, despite the awful season? And... Um, Either of you got a spare ticket to the game in Eden Park on Saturday night? <laughs> Christine. <laughs> um, well, oh, look, yeah, yeah, I, oh, you go, I, Christine, yep. I, I hate to admit that I'm not a great sports fan, really, anyway. Look, I, I love the All Blacks because they're our team and they're there, but I don't watch and I don't really take any interest. The only time it's ever worried me was when I was doing my child abuse work and, dear God, every time the All Blacks lost, what happened to kids and women was Yeah, just... you know, that used to be the case. I can remember talking to Anne's jury. You said, I think that the severity of that has dropped off over time. Oh, uh, well, look, I don't know if it has, but it was very... They, we would, they would put on extra police um, wow. at the time of All Blacks test. Yeah. If, if there was any chance we were going to lose, because the domestic violence skyrocketed. Now, if that's changed, I'll be very surprised, because it hasn't changed in any other way. All right. So, Craig, you got a ticket for me? Um, <laughs> no, but I have, <coughs> I've got my own ticket, and I'm, <coughs> I'm going, yeah, I'm going, I'm going to support them. Uh, here's the exciting bit, though, I've never, ever, ever, at 50 years old, I've never been to an All Blacks test match yet. You are so kidding me, uh, Craig. Oh, no, my, you're like, no, you're a virgin. And I'm a, yeah, I am, and I'm a sports nut, but I've never, ever been to an actual All Blacks game, so it's kind of exciting, I've, although I've, people have told me that when you're actually there, 
you get the atmosphere, but you miss out on the commentary, the replays, the close-ups, and all the good stuff. So, yeah. So um, what you do is you go I'll back go and you watch a replay on television. Yeah, exactly right. But um, I am a I am a, a sports nut. I always have been, and, and worked with a lot of sports over the years. And, and although motorsports been my thing, which is one of the reasons. You know, Christine and I will have a very close relationship because of the racetrack down in, in Taupo. Uh, but I'll, I'll be going to support them. And even when they lose, uh, I'll, I'm still there. I'm, I'm not a sook about it. All right. Um, look, finally, we had Chris Luxon on. And, gosh, it's taken us three or four months to get Chris Luxon on. He promised us 10 minutes today. He gave us 25. It was an interesting chat. And we covered a fair bit of ground. I kind of got... And I wasn't looking for an admission or a soundbite from him. But he said, look... I am going to be a middle ground politician. That is how the big parties win. We aim for the centre of, of New Zealand politics, so I'm not going to be super radical. Is he the guy? Do you think he's the guy, Christine? Chris Luxon? Oh, hell, look, I hope so. But New Zealand is expecting a lot from the National Party. You know, we all know that there's the huge feeling of a lot of people over issues that they cannot have an opinion about, they can't speak out about. And boy, oh boy, everyone's looking to National to fix that. If they don't, I don't think they stand a chance. I do think he's good. I think he's the best they've got at the moment and he's going to make a difference. But the expectations are enormous on what they're going to do. So they damn well better deliver. Yeah. Craig, he was very ambiguous about whether or not he got a fair go from the media he didn't want to upset the apple cart. I know that you don't feel you get the coverage uh, that you deserve. Do you think National gets a hard time from our legacy media? And do you think Chris Luxon is a worthy possible next Prime Minister? Yeah, I, I actually listened to that interview, which is, you know, you should be yeah. surprised and happy and pleased. Yeah. Uh, I did, and I, I was very impressed with him. I thought he, he, he was a great interview. I, he, yeah, he has, the, he has the capability to do this. He didn't early on. I was incredibly worried, but he's certainly growing into the role, and that's fine. And, um, you know, I can sort of link in with that a little bit. You grow into it and, and end up being exactly what the people want. So I think he has a good opportunity to, to lead a pretty good national party. And I'd take it a guess, I would say, with ACT would be my guess, is, is 2023's coalition. So I think the two of them can work well together, yeah. All right. Now, look, the final question for the two of you, you're campaigning for mayoralties, do you take Sunday off? Would that be the right thing to do or are you going to knock a few doors on the Queen's death public holiday on Monday? Christine? <laughs> I don't knock on any doors, but I am everywhere at everything, talking to everybody I possibly can, and I haven't had a weekend off for a long, long time. All right, so that's yes, I'll work the Monday. Craig, you working yep. Monday, campaigning Monday? Yep, Mon Sunday and Monday and today and tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday, yep. Thursday, yep. every day. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, <laughs> lovely having introducing you both across the phone. Thank you so much for taking part in Free Speech Friday on the platform and we will talk with you both uh, again soon. Have a safe and happy uh, long weekend. Christine Rankin there. Right, you too. Thank you, guys. Uh, Christine you. Rankin bye there, bye, uh, mayoral candidate for Taupo. Craig Lord, Miracle, mayoral candidate for Auckland. Wasn't that a sad story? Afiso Collins pulls out, Wayne Brown pulls out, and Craig Lord has the chance to have lunch with Wendy Petrie and they just pull the plug on the whole thing at the Commercial Club in Auckland. That's a very sorry story.